What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Life is Feudal Forest Village. My name is Splattercat, happy to have you here today. So as you can see our terraforming project went through. Uh, I missed a couple spots right there but that's because the grid is so light. I, I wish the grid was a little bit more opaque in all fairness. And so is this area not done yet? Oh this area still got like 17 work left. But this is the general idea that I was going after. Is I'm going to turn our entire city basically into a big quarry. I probably could have done it better by leveling with the ground right here and then going outwards but you get the rough idea of what I was going for I couldn't explain it before because I did it kind of off camera and you can't see the grids very well I'm just gonna keep pushing this wall back until it's way far back and we're just gonna have a nice flat space to build on because frankly in this game dealing with the building can be a little bit painful our food supply is dropping a little bit uh, building is on fire but we do have wells around apparently we have two wells I guess we started with one so I guess that was foolish of me but I will actually more than likely deconstruct this one right there then because we need the building materials more than we need the well. well welcome on back! Uh, reception was pretty good for the last episode so I figured we keep on checking in and seeing how the game is going by comparison to like where it was at launch. I have had some crashing. I've been playing on my own on the side and I have had some memory leaks and some crashing and some stuff like that. So just be aware that I know in the previous episode I said it looked like it was all cleared out but it looked like it took some time to rear its head. I'm actually going to do that right there. And so the way that this tool works is you click on a spot, you get the circle, and this is the altitude you want them to maintain, and then you just drag it, and they will cut the earth away until you have, like, a nice open space. Now, it does make your base look kind of ugly. I'm not going to lie about that part. It doesn't look good. But, actually, if I could bring this all down to the same height, that's probably what I'll do next. And so let's just kind of paint box all of this. And we'll let the workers do their thing, and we'll smooth it out with anything that I've missed along the way. I'm sure there's going to be little bluffs or something up in here that I've messed up. But it looks like it's going to take quite a bit of labor to get that done. And so, I don't want to overbook myself. Yeah, so there it is. 186 labor needs to be done right there. I do wish they would get rid of some of the fog effects in the game, too. The fog effects can be a little bit frustrating to see through. They've got such a beautiful game. And I want to see it, you know what I mean? I want to see the game. I want to see what's going on. I want to see what's happening with my peoples. Uh, with my builders over here. We've got four builders. Carpenters going up. We're going to need food supply pretty soon, so I'll probably assign the other people over to here. I'll probably take a couple people off lumberjacking just so we can do that a little bit better. And I don't know if this is done by laborers or builders over here. It looks like it's done by laborers. So I'll go ahead and get the laborers going, and we'll come back once that job's all done. Our carpentry hut is done over here. The point of the carpentry hut is actually to provide you with primitive tools. Uh, he produces primitive tools for three stone and one log. And primitive tools are something we're going to want a pretty decent supply of, considering our really nice tools are running out right now. Love the lighting effects on the little buildings. I don't think those were in-game the last time that I played. I don't think that those existed. And so I'm glad to see a little bit of light thrown into your village. A little bit of a... I guess a little bit of the ass of civilization shining through the darkness. Just being like, eh, this is my ass. I am civilization. You know, you gotta, you gotta let it hang out there every now and again. You gotta let people know. You gotta let people feel it. You got me? Have I mentioned how much I like the music in this game? The music in this game is just remarkably relaxing. They did a great job with the soundtrack. It's one of those games that makes me, like, happy to play it. Like, you can play this game at 2 a.m. before bed and you don't get, like, overly hyped. You know what I mean? Like, if I play something like Player Unknown right before I go to bed, I go to bed with my heart pounding because the game is intense. There's a lot of stuff going on. Whereas, like, in this game, this is one of those things that you can just play for a couple of hours and not worry about it. I'm going to take somebody off lumberjacking for right now because I don't think that's going to be helpful to our overall trajectory at the moment. And instead, I'm going to have them all be workers because the terraforming project is moving along, but it's taking more time than I expected. And that's largely due to the fact that it seems like they've got to walk around to different areas in order to terraform. What I prefer that they do is they just come to one side and just line up on one end and they just work non-stop on it. I feel like that'd be a more elegant solution that just makes it, I mean, it doesn't look good on camera, you know what I mean? Like, it's not one of those things that plays well cinematically, but it does make the work get done a little bit quicker. Seeing as it's been almost a year now and they're only like a third of the way through it, it's a lot of work to be done. Chances are I don't have the laborers either right now. Food supply is pretty much even. Could be worse, could be better, but largely we're just waiting for more population right now. Until you get up to about 30 villagers, this game plays very slowly. Alright, so our massive undertaking here. It took us almost two years to get this thing done, but it's getting closer. Uh, we have 18 workers now, so people are growing up, they're getting ready to work, and they're being added to the workforce, which is great. Uh, the thing we're going to want to turn our sights to right after this is providing for more wood, and then right after we do that, 
we're going to want to go through. So I'll probably put a Forester's Lodge right here, actually. That might be a decent plan. Let's go to our Forestry menu, and we'll see if we can put in a Forester's Lodge right here. A Forester's Lodge is going to help out on this spot by quite a bit, but we're out of stone. So we got to gather some stone, too. Let's find ourselves some stone, then. Let's get this thing moving. And so there's about 50 stone right there. That should be enough to keep us cooking for a little while, as soon as this job is done. Uh, this thing is finished over here, so let me get back into the terraforming menu very rapidly. And all that I want to do is even out the trouble spots that I missed, because once again, uh, the grid can be very hard to see in this game. And so there we go. We're going to terraform whatever we can over here. And that should only be a very small amount of labor. Like, it shouldn't be bad at all. That should take them all of eight seconds to finish off. But this is the rough idea that I was going for right now. We're going to have kind of a little bluffs area here on this side. And then up above, we're going to have a separate area that's going to be kind of forested and nice. So we got more stone coming in. In addition, because we have so many laborers right now, I'm just going to tell them to go through and whack everything over here. Whatever they can get sounds good to me. And then... We'll go into our forestry menu, and we'll think about putting in a forester's lodge right there. Now, he is going to have some trouble at this forester's lodge, simply based on the fact that he's got to walk a long way to the nearest stockpile. But we're going to remedy that in just a minute. I think I'm going to try and put in a ramp right here so they can walk up and down it. So we've got, like, a road or something like that that could be taken care of. I'll have to go through the terraforming tools and figure it out. Yeah, there we go. And so I would like for there to be a ramp right here. It probably won't look good, but it's good enough. Like, it's going to have to be anyways. I don't know exactly how the ramp tool works. Some of the terraforming tools can take some effort to figure out. There we go. Oh, I got to pick the... Okay, I see what went wrong there. When you release, it wants you to pick the height. Perfect. So we'll get that done right there. And so there should be a little tiny terraforming job to get done. I just want to have continuity between roads. I'll probably put in a warehouse right here so that this poor cat over here can get whatever it is done that he needs to get done. Uh, is the forestry lodge finished or do we not have enough wood for that? We don't have enough wood for that. They're bringing back stone right now, but they should be able to whack all the other things as they go along too. And so there's our little ramp. That should be a good enough ramp for people to go up and down. And so there you go. They're already using that thoroughfare to make their road a lot less. Think about little efficiency things like this. I know that I dug like a trench in the middle of my entire city, but sometimes you got to do stuff like that in order to make it work. I think we're looking pretty solid over on this side. As soon as that's done, I'll probably assign a couple of workers over here. And then we've also got enable tree cutting, disable tree planting. Okay, so tree planting and tree cutting are both going to be linked. We should have guys over here that'll just get the wood chopping done as we see it at the moment. I keep thinking that that bird that flies by is my mouse cursor just gone completely and totally crazy. But it's not, I promise. Now that we've got that, we also want to start thinking about places for our people to live. That's going to be the next part. I am going to chop some trees over here just to get some extra wood. Uh, the forests will grow back. They grow back pretty aggressively in this game. So don't worry about it too much if it seems like you're deforesting too fast. If you have a little bit of time where you focus on farms or anything like that, I promise you it'll come all back. We've got loads of vegetables. We've got loads of fish. Uh, we should be good on food for right now. Everything is assigned on up. I've got everybody going full bore on food production at the moment because food production was our main concern after this project right here. This project actually took up far more time than I wanted it to. It just turned into one of those things that needed to get done, and so now we're trying to recover. We have plenty of primitive tools, because while I was doing the other stuff, I had the carpenter working the entire time. He used up, like, an entire, like, 300 stack of stone to make tools. That came right in time, because our high-quality tools have actually diminished. We're out of them. We don't have them anymore. And so when things break, things break, and you can't use them anymore. Um, things like axes, hammers, and stuff like that, you'd figure they keep on going forever. But in video games, they always seem to degrade pretty quickly. I could see a pickaxe degrading quickly, but my dad has got axes that are, like, belong to his dad. And his dad got them when he was, like, in his 20s and stuff like that. Like, axes, as long as you keep them sharp and oiled, they should last for a long, long time. Laborers are going to do their thing. We're going to start getting our wood stockpile right back and recovered. I will more than likely take people off of wood chopping duty for right now because we've got... A pretty good stack of firewood. Our population is growing rapidly enough to where we are going to look after food supplies. And we're going to try and get into farming in this episode. But that's largely going to depend on how many people I end up with who are capable of doing that task by the end of the episode. Aside from that, my suggestion would be we just start building small houses here and there. Small house here, small house there, small houses littered everywhere. And believe me, my people litter. They litter like crap. I've been trying to talk them out of it, but like in this 1980s mindset where they think that you can just like do whatever you want and the environment won't suffer for it. And so, you know, I'm trying to talk them out of it, but it takes time, man. 
it takes time. People have to learn from the mistakes that they're making. In addition, I get the feeling that people are doing stuff over here that I don't want them to do. And so if I can cancel out all of the labor on this side, that'd be great. So that they're not like doing weird stuff with stones. Instead, I'm going to chop down trees over in this area. And I just want them to focus entirely upon felling that forest. And that looks pretty good. And we'll give them some time to accomplish that. I will get the next house up and running right here. So we have our next little residential area. I'm going to have the door out front, please. And we'll run this up against the wall in the back if we can. Perfecto. Absolutely perfect in schlag. All right, so we got that taken care of. They're going to be building a house and chopping down trees for what I assume will be like the remainder of the episode. They've got more than enough food in order to get a lot of stuff done. And so once again, this is that time where you and I got to take a little break and see what happens here. So this is how nature takes a tumble right here. Sometimes nature's got to take one for the team. Uh, we got a bunch of people living inside that house right there, which leads me to believe I should probably continue just expanding this area out. I want the front of the house right there. Can I get a third one in there? Do I have to turn that corner kind of oddly? That's okay. We don't have to build particularly organized. Old cities are never organized, and so we can just put things around. I'll probably stack another well right there. Let me get a few more workers going in. And then aside from that, I actually want people to gather hay. I love that they've added buttons for all this stuff to make it easier so that you can go and just get your stuff that you need from the hills. We are going to need a pretty substantial supply of hay to go into the future. We'll be able to grow our own later, but since we don't have farming up and running, it's one of those things that we've got to uh, just manage for right now. We've got to make it work. The forester's doing his thing over here. I disabled wood chopping so that he'll only plant trees. That should allow this area to bounce back pretty quickly as far as the ecology is concerned. And we've still got lots of stone to harvest from this area. I think that should make our supply nice and robust. I don't think we'll have to worry too much about it. We're back into winter, so firewood is obviously going to be a concern once more. We don't want people freezing to death or anything like that. But we've got people growing up, and we've got 35, 34 people right now. I know my numbers. I know my diggits. I know them. I know my diggities. And with three buildings over here, it looks like we don't have the hay to conclude that job. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and take a couple of workers off right there. I'll probably assign one extra. This game is very free flow too. Other games, you can assign people to a job forever and never touch it again. This game, you should constantly be moving workers around. You should constantly be changing up like their employment opportunities, essentially. Because you're going to need more food at certain times of year. You're going to need more firewood at certain times of year. And you're going to need less of that stuff once you get up back around to like the fair seasons. The seasons that actually matter. You know what I mean? The ones for growing and all that kind of fun stuff. Looks like the gatherer's hut's a little bit cold right now. Well, then they should run and go get firewood. I mean, it's right here inside the little stockpile thing. I am thinking about moving our barn. So if you don't know the difference, uh, you've got two different things in this game. You've got warehouses and barns. Barns are for food and processed stuff like tools, things of that nature. Warehouses are for raw materials, in case you were wondering. That's how that all functions. Uh, he's still a little bit cold. I mean, we're going through firewood at a pretty rapid fire rate right now. And I don't mean to be punny about that. That's just the way that it went down. I will assign another person to wood chopping then. That's going to make a dent into our log total. But it should allow us to conclude some of this stuff without too many problems. These guys are too far from a supply chain. And so as I build up here, I'll probably put another warehouse and barn probably like right here. So it's kind of close and accessible by comparison to these two. But small houses are done. And so our growth should be pretty good. These are five apiece. Pay attention to this number, not this number, when you're trying to plan your housing. So that's five. There's 15 over here. That should be 20, 25, and each one of these services four. And so we should be sitting at around capacity for around 50-ish people. I shouldn't have to build any more houses for a little bit. But I'm thinking this is coming together pretty nicely. I like the way our village is growing. The tree line will probably never recover. The tree line's definitely the worst for wear right now. The tree line's got to take one for the team, though. Uh, seeing as we've got lots of time, I'm just going to tell them to gather whatever resources from over here. Get all this, like, stone cleared out of the field. They've got nothing better to do for, like, the next ten minutes, and so... I'll set it up so that we got a nice supply of stone and ore for the future because you do get the... It's easy to go through stone and ore rapidly without realizing how much of it you've used up. As our population grows, we are going to want to expand our food options, maybe put in a few more fishermen's huts. Maybe another gatherer's hut actually would not be a terrible idea either. Maybe on the opposite side of this ramp or maybe over on this side of the bluff. This will probably be where the next warehouse is on this side, and I'd like to build that before rather than after putting in the gatherer's hut because our food supply is taking a dent at the moment and so we got to get on that 
this should be a nice little pasture area, I think, where we'll put all fields out here so that we can grow, like, we'll have a grain field, uh, we'll have a hay field, we'll have a vegetable field, and that'll be pretty cool. We've got enough workers to get that going on. And so uh, things are about to get a little bit fruitful up in here. Things are about to get fruitful up in here. I'm not going to do an orchard. Orchards are kind of strange. They're, you know, orchards are good. But at the same time, orchards kind of have fundamental issues where they have a long run-up time. They don't provide you with food right now. They provide you with food in like 5, 10 years. And once they're up and running, they're great. But don't rely on them to save you early on in the game because they won't. They won't. I think what I'm going to do now is I think I'm going to put in new stockpiles and warehouses. We've got enough stuff around to make it happen. And so my thought for where that should go is somewhere like right here. Uh, this is going to be centralized. And so if I do a warehouse and a barn combo right here, it's centralized enough. I do wish that there was Teamsters in this game. Uh, guys whose job it was just to move things in between warehouses and make sure the supply is standardized between different areas. That would be one of those additions that I think would make the game a lot easier and a lot less um, a lot less micromanaging intensive because as of right now your supply chains you got to have like barns and things in the right areas in fact these barns will probably fall into disuse once I put these over here because I would like to get I'm gonna put in a field right here so we've got the barns on that side and what I'd like to see it's just a little field right there. And I'll do what I can with it. I mean, the field's going to get constructed when it gets constructed. I'll go ahead and throw in a bunch of workers so that it gets done quickly. We'll let the trees and the rocks and everything else sort of recover. We're sitting on a lot of ore right now. We could use a little bit more stone. But this over here, we've got spring coming up pretty soon. And I'd like to get planting moving before this gets any more precarious. Please don't get attacked by a bear. I wouldn't be able to bear it. It would be, you know, if that bear comes by and likes, what's your sign? I'd be a little bit upset. So as soon as they get that land cleared out, we should be solid. I'll add another one in here, too, because we just got a new worker. They're having babies. They're making that fun time. They're doing all kinds of stuff out here. And I think we're going to have a pretty prosperous settlement shortly. I'll make all the fields out in this area, and then we'll kind of just expand down the coast, is my thought. I mean, villages tended to thrive when they expanded along a waterway that had easy access. I mean, I would say, looking at the real world, that this would be the spot right here where the city would be. Or this right here would be where the city would be, kind of along this little bay right here. It tends to be where your origin points for cities are. But, we started out over here, and that's okay. I mean, we're on an island, so we'll probably have through traffic at some point. It is probable that planting season will be a little sketchy this year. We didn't get this up as quickly as I would have liked to. I was hoping it'd be done by spring. You, wanna, you tend to want to build your farms like in winter or at the end of fall so that they're ready to go by the next spring. Our food supply is definitely taking a good thwacking right now. And so we'll need to augment that somehow. Uh, here. Grow potatoes, please. And just say okay on potatoes. Whatever we can get out is what we get out. But our food supply is struggling at the moment. In addition, I would suggest that maybe a gatherer set tends to go pretty well with foresters lodges since they tend to be areas where things don't get into too much trouble I'll probably put this guy right here we have no wood for it so obviously that's gonna have to wait but we'll get it done when we get it done I also have no farmers so let me assign farmers as well we're gonna go max value on that because I want them to get this field done as soon as possible I want to at least get some kind of potato harvest this year and we'll do the best we can with our predators uh, we got a warehouse going up right here we used up all of our wood and all of our extra supplies so what I'll have to do here is I'll have to cancel most of the labor going on on this side. And instead, we'll just have them focus entirely on getting us more wood. Our firewood supply is also a little bit precarious. So there we go. That should bring us around a little bit further. Nothing going on over here because we're out of wood. And so firewood choppers can't really do a whole lot. We'll reduce the amount of firewood choppers for the moment until we get further on in and we start to get a decent wood supply back. This bear's rooting around in our potato field. This bear's trying to get a whooping. He's trying to get fed up that ass whooping. Oh good, it's hydrating the soil now too. So you want there to be a lot of water in the soil if you're trying to plant things. You can also gather immediately with this little button right here if you feel like you're not going to make it. And like there's like a half a field here that's got a bunch of potatoes on it popping out, sprouting. But the other half of the field hasn't gotten done yet and winter's coming. You can actually manually tell him to harvest too just so it gets done real rapidly. 
Uh, water levels, I think, are going to be an issue, and it looks like heat levels are a little bit too high as well. We are getting intermittent rain, but we'll have to wait and see how this goes. They're putting labor into it as fast as they can, and it should start to produce before too long. Uh, fish are not going to hold us up for too much longer, and so I would actually lean away from fisheries in the near future just to make sure we stay safe there. Firewood, we might have a little die-off this winter. I'm thinking there's going to be a die-off this winter just because I, I kind of didn't manage my priorities properly. And frankly, that's the nice thing about this game, too, is it's very difficult to lose at this game. Um, as long as you kind of shift things around, you'll just fall back. You'll have like 80 villagers and like 30 of them will die off until you're at equilibrium and you have way too much food. And so it's not too bad. Like, things can't go too wrong with this game. There's no, like, losing criteria or anything like that. Add a few more workers to the gatherer's hut and let them do their thing. Obviously, as with all hunter and gatherer type objects, uh, they are temporary. You tend to move them around to the outskirts of your city as you play the game longer and longer. And in fact, with the rate at which people are breeding right now and having kids, dude, it's 26 degrees outside. Jesus, no wonder. This is early summer, huh? It's 27 degrees. That's got to be Celsius. It's got to be Celsius. If it's not Celsius, I'll eat my hat. And I have a lot of hats, so I guess I would eat my hats would be the change that I would make right there. The gatherers should be able to stock this area up. We should see a nice little explosion in our vegetable count here over the next winter or so. I would actually not be adverse to putting a couple hunters out here either. Like a hunter's lodge, I think, would work too, just to keep them away from our crops and make sure that something good is happening over here so let's go ahead and drop that right there we've got the supplies to make it happen we already have builders on the job so we don't need to worry about them standing around being idle which was the issue ran into before yield right now is about 500 potatoes that's good that's real good that'll take a lot of the weight off of our fish supply so i've turned harvesting back on over here i'm hoping that by the end of the summer we should have a crop of around a thousand potatoes that we can pull out of there and that'll be that's our, that's basically our insurance problem, our, our insurance policy. I can talk right now. I can enunciate. I can say words. Do we have so many workers coming of age right now? This is a cray cray. Every single day, yay. No matter what they say, yay. Uh, yeah, give me a couple hunters over here. Just two hunters. We don't need, like, all of our hunters over there. Just a couple of hunters to even it out. Uh, we are chopping up our wood supply right now. I've managed to get rid of most of the forest around of our city, so you should have some better visibility as we play. I also re-enabled tree harvesting on our forester's lodge right now. I'm going to leave this little area alone and treat it like a game preserve from now on, and in fact, I'm going to start moving in this direction, I think. I can build roads. I think roads are over... I think they cost stone, but there's roads right here. Or we can just do a dirt road, which is not so difficult. Uh, roads make it so your people can get around a little bit more efficiently. You can just drag and drop them. It's no biggie. It's one of those little tiny micromanagey tasks that you probably want to do. Just because it connects things together. Yeah, something like that right there. And then as this goes out this way, we'll take that right in front of their house. I'll probably put something in right here for now, but it's just going to look janky for a minute. And then, they should take the roads. As far as I know, if I remember correctly, the AI prioritizes walking on roads or something like that. So bring that over to there. I'm going to have that run in between there. Oh, I can't do a road right there. Okay, that's fine. No roads for me. Well, instead, we'll try and do a road right here then. And have it go over to the farmland. And so there we go. It looks a little bit more lived in. I mean, it looks a tiny bit robotic. But I actually like the... I liked it in other games where the places that people tend to walk, it kills the grass. I've seen that in other city managers before, and it made me really happy. Harvest is almost here. Like, this is going very well over here. Like, exceedingly well. This is exceeding specifications by a long margin. If we can get 2,000 food out, dude, we are stocked for the future. I'll probably put something in that grows hay over here. Uh, wood is gradually trickling in. I think given the amount of trees that we have around, unfortunately we're going to struggle with that for a while, but looking good. Uh, they're bringing in meat, they're bringing in furs, so we should be able to get a clothier up pretty soon. Somebody who's capable. Ah, an herbalist lodge. You are absolutely correct, chat. You are, I know you're saying it right now. Why don't you have an herbalist lodge? I should get an herbalist lodge. I think you're correct. I think you're very correct. I'll probably put it over here with the rest of our forestry stuff, too. Our little village that we got going on over here. Kind of our little worker's paradise. Uh, where was that at? I think it was in... Here? 
An herbalist hut? Yeah. Herbal the hut? We'll go ahead and have Herbal the hut over here. Eowagi Chewbacca. Herbal the hut doing his thing. I will also gather stone because our stone supply is actually pretty bad. It's not a good stone supply. It is a stone supply that is very much lacking in merit at the moment. I, I feel good about where we're at right now, though, with our village. I think Booty Brook is growing. Uh, all of our little cities. We probably need some more houses, but that's okay. We'll build some more pretty soon. Might just put one right there, and we'll just have, like, a nice little clutch right here of houses. We should see some stone come back to this warehouse. If we were going to do building, we would probably want to put our manufacturing over here, seeing as both of these warehouses are more than likely not going to have a whole lot of stuff inside of them. My hope is that it'll segregate the food supply. If it's early fall, go ahead and harvest now. Do your thing. I, I don't want to risk losing a crop right now. And so if we can bring in food, that'd be great. That barn's not even close to full. So as you can see, they'll go through, and these guys will actually get to hoeing. Hoeing all day, every day. But don't, don't, don't. What you doing, girl? Out here hoeing this field. What you doing? Nothing getting that money. All right, so that should take us up to a ridiculously awesome surplus as far as our food is concerned. In addition, I'll probably put it in another field during the, the winter just so we have it over there. But we got to wait for people to be grown up because, our unfortunately, our stock of people capable of working is a little bit overdrawn right now. In addition, I think our firewood supply is going to become somewhat cumbersome fairly soon, too. And so my next suggestion would be that maybe we put another chopping hut over here. Just in case. Just in case. I don't feel like my laborers are bringing back stone. It is possible that they're bringing back only iron. No, iron's not flagged. They should be bringing back stone pretty soon. I don't know what they're up to. So I figured out why the stone supply isn't going up. They're taking the stone straight over to this building. That's why the stone supply is not increasing as of right now. Uh, I like this area, though. If we can keep this area, it's kind of like a nature preserve for everybody. And do their thing here. Stop chopping trees. Chopping down too many trees, bro. You're killing it all off. We got 29 people, 9 teenagers, and 11 babies right now. Actually, 10 babies, because one of them grew up. That went down at the wrong moment. I was like, baby, no! Why you gonna die on me, baby? I was a little upset. But baby didn't die. Baby's fine. Baby's good. Baby's ready to ride for the cows. Uh, go ahead and give me all these trees down here. I don't want these trees down here at all. And so as soon as you guys are finished off with some of your other jobs, firewood's going to be a little bit rough this season, but I think we put ourselves in a good position to succeed at the moment. I thought we were going to have a die-off, but it's looking pretty solid right now. I do wish they had a little number right here that told you what space you had for your housing. I'm sure there's a menu or something like that in here that I can take a look at, but I would like it to be a little bit easier to find. Like, you got the village info, so if it just said your max capacity versus what you had right here, kind of Tropico style, I, I think that that would help it out quite a bit. But yeah, I think we're out of time for the day. This is uh, Forest Village. Life is Feudal Forest Village. I'll see y'all next time. Uh, if you want more, as always, be very, very vocal. Bang those tables. Slam your fist down like a Viking with a tankard full of ale. And I'll do what I can to continue producing episodes of the series you like, while at the same time, you know, kind of rotating things so that you've always got eyes on the cool new indie series that are releasing on Steam and everywhere else. My name is Splattercat. I will see you all later. Hi to everybody.